first three to five seconds of meeting you, then in case you don't have kids, everyone you care about dies like pigs in hell. It's that important they like you. Let's see if you use your body differently. Ready? Go, go, go. All right, did that feel better, yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Did you use more of your body, yes or no? Yes. More of your face, yes or no? Yes. Did you breathe more full or more shallow? Full. Mm, did you talk louder or quieter? Yes. Did you move faster or slower? Yes. Did you hesitate or go straight for them? Yes. Did it feel good? Yes. Why? Because emotion is created by motion. If you use more of what God has given you, you will feel more. But most of us have learned to shrink how we use our bodies in the cultures we live in today. Most people's idea of exercise is fill the tub, pull the plug, and fight the current. <laughs> people get injured typing today. Ooh, that hurts. Scary. Use your body, you will feel more alive. And the same thing is true with these couples. Now. Was that the best greeting you're capable of giving another human being? Yes or no? Some of you are saying yes, most of you are saying no. Let's review the exercise. I said if you don't give your best, everyone you care about dies like pigs in hell. And you still didn't give your best? We need to talk. Listen, if you said no, I respect you because you were honest. Because whenever we say we've given our best, it's always a lie. Because whenever you get there, what do we always discover? There's another level. Every four years for centuries in the Olympics, what happens? People run faster, they jump higher, they lift more weight. Every four years for thousands of years. How, how has this happened? Drugs, that's how. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, that was just a recent thing. <laughs> the point of the matter is, whenever you get to where you think your best is, it opens up another possibility. And this is what couples have to see. They think they've already had their best days in the beginning. And some of us have been guilty of encouraging or agreeing with that. And that's the worst thing you could possibly do. This idea, when I first started coming out doing the things I was doing, I'll never forget, the attacks on me were, he's raising people's expectations, and they're going to be disappointed. I hope the hell so. Disappointment. If you don't have a higher expectation and get disappointed, you're not going for anything. You're not alive. And besides, the disappointment will either drive you or crush you. You get to decide which one it's going to be. Absolutely. So, since that clearly wasn't the best one you're capable of giving, we have to take up one more level. You say, what are we going to do, get naked? No, no, no. <laughs> this time, what I want you to do is I want you to greet people like they're your long-lost lover or best friend. Like, oh my God, look, it's Mary. Look at her. Oh my God, there she is. Ah! I want you to greet people like your long-lost lover or best friend. Ready? Go, go, go. Did that feel better, yes or no? Yes or no? Did you use more of your body or less of your body? More. more of the muscles in your face or less? More. Did you breathe more air in or were you more shallow? More. Yes. Did you talk faster or slower? Yes. Did you hesitate or go straight for them? Yes. Did you talk louder or quieter? Yes. Did you touch them? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did it feel good? Yes. Why? Because I told you to. Very good, sir. Thank you very much. Because emotion is created by? That's right. Now, most people get in a relationship because they're after some emotion, not another job. True or false? And for most people, it becomes a job. And then many people encourage them to stay with the job, which is a nice thing. But wouldn't it be nicer to have them enjoy the job and not have it feel like a job? And the only way to do that is we've got to rejuvenate the individual. 
There's nothing worse, nothing on earth, than two emotionally unfit people put together. Because what is a relationship's purpose? Why do we get in relationships? Someone tell me. To grow, to experience love, to be happy, to learn deep spiritual lessons, to have someone to be to. Thank you, sir. Very good. Someone to be to. Now, here's what's interesting. Everything you would say to me, whatever you're going to say to me about why we get in a relationship, underneath it, you would say, so we can make a difference in the world together. But why do you want to make a difference? Because it's going to make you feel something. There's only one reason we get in a relationship, to magnify human emotion. That's it. That's God's gift. How many of you, when you're excited about something, first thing you think about is who you want to tell or share it with? How many of you have relate to this in some way? Say, I. I. So some people use a friend, but the intimate relationship, if it's not only safe, but there's real love and passion there, there's no greater place. If there's trust, if there's respect, there's no greater place for this. But the challenge, of course, is most people don't have it at that level. And one of the reasons, again, is there's not that emotional fitness. Here's what you got to know. People feel they find their center of gravity, and then they blame their partner. And here's what I mean by this. When 911 happened, I'll never forget, I had this experience. I was in Hawaii. I was doing a program there for a couple thousand people from 45 countries. We were translating four languages simultaneously. It was a 10-day program I used to do that was full tilt from 8 in the morning to midnight. I mean, you had people from all over the world, real leaders. And I just said, living. When do people really begin to live? When they face death. If they face death and they look it in the eye and decide to live, they really start to live. And I said, what would your life be like if in the next 10 days you knew you couldn't get off this island and these are the last 10 days of your life? What would you do different? Who would you call? What would you say? What truth would you tell? What feelings would you share? And I went on with us for like 15 minutes. That night, 911 happened. At 3 o'clock in the morning, they called me to tell me the buildings had just dropped. And we had 200 people from New York there, because I have a lot of people in the financial district that are my clients. And there were at least 45 people we knew immediately that had lost their entire company, all their friends, family, their husbands, their wives, instantaneously. 3 o'clock in the morning, you go outside, and it was pandemonium. Because you got people from all these cultures, every religion was represented in the room. And so outside, there were people that were crying uncontrollably because they knew the end times were here. There were people out there that were fighting because some people were celebrating. I mean, it was brutal. No one thought I'd get everybody in the room. I got them in the room and I said, today is about emotional mastery. That was the scheduled portion of that day it was supposed to be. I said, and this is the real test. And so we brought people together and I got people to express to me and sell each other. At the moment that 911 happened, what did they focus on? Because these are three decisions that shape your life. Number one, what are you going to focus on? Right now while I'm talking, you're making a decision what to focus on, and it's what shapes your life. It's, it shapes every relationship. It shapes your entire destiny. Are you focused on what this is going to mean to your life? Are you focusing on who the hell is he to tell me that? Are you focusing on the smell of your neighbor after that jumping up and down? <laughs> Whatever you focus on, you feel, don't you? Even if it's not true, you feel it. So focus is the first decision we make. Second decision is what does this mean? Is this the end or the beginning? If you think it's the end in a relationship, you're going to behave very differently than if you think it's the beginning. Is God punishing me with this? Is God teasing me? Is God challenging me? Is this God's reward? One shift in meaning instantaneously changes your emotion and your emotion is your life. And then the third decision we make every moment is what are we going to do? Pull back, go forward, give up, sit down, stand up, make it happen. So I ask people, what did you focus on? What did it mean? What did you decide to do? People stand and share this. And afterwards, one woman raised her hand, and she was from New York, and she said, you know, last night after your talk, she said, my boyfriend had asked me to marry him. And I told him no, because my previous fiancé had been murdered and killed, kidnapped and killed. And she said, I'm not over that. And he said, well, you go to that stupid seminar, then it's over between us. And she said, then fine, it's over. And she said, then when you said that that first night, I got chills. So I called him last night at midnight to leave a message to tell him how much I love him, that I want to marry him. And she said, he called me back at 3 o'clock this morning. She said, but I didn't get the message, but I have it here. And he was at the top of the World Trade Centers where he worked. And she actually has a voice. She was on Larry King later on sharing this. And he plays this thing on and he says, honey, I can't tell you what it means to me to get your message and to know that you love me. You can't imagine how much I treasure it. 
And he said, unfortunately, I have bad news. He said, I don't know what's happened, but the whole building's on fire. And he said, I'm not going to get out. And he said, so I just want you to know, he said, that I love you so much and that you've touched my heart and my soul so much. And if there's only one thing I could say to you is I don't, you must be asking why God would do this to you twice with two different men. He said, I don't know, but maybe it's a lesson, honey, that whatever you do every day of your life, love and don't ever hold it back again. Don't hold back love. Don't hold back anything. Love every day you've got. I love you. And he hung up. Everyone in the room is crying uncontrollably. And then the first man who stands up is a man from Pakistan. He says, I just want to say I'd like to hold your hand and say that I feel sorry for you and cry with you. But frankly, I'm from Pakistan. I'm a Muslim. This is retribution. It was like a war broke out in the room. And so I brought him on stage and I brought a man on stage who was an Israeli man who truly was, to say the least, more than upset with this man. He has family in the occupied territories. He worked in the in the Twin Towers, so if he'd been there that day, he'd been dead if he wasn't at the seminar. And we merged these people. But the biggest lesson I got, and they became friends, and they worked together for peace, and it's been, you know, five years, whatever it's been now, six years. The bottom line, though, is this. I noticed something that day. Angry people got angry. Sad people got sad. Worried people worried. Loving people loved. This one woman was so pissed off, so I went around and asked her about things. She wasn't from America. She knows no one in New York City. This didn't affect her in any way, and yet she was raging about this thing. I said, you just get pissed off all the time. You use rage all the time. And she kind of smiled and goes, well, it's kind of like jet fuel. <laughs> I brought up this woman who worked in the hospitals in New York, and she was guilty that she wasn't there to help people. But as you dig underneath, she always finds a way to be guilty. Here's my point. People, how many of you know somebody who always finds a way to be pissed off no matter what happens? How many know somebody that goes, say, I? <laughs> How do you know somebody that isn't funny, but they think they are? <laughs> and they laugh so hard at their own jokes that you find yourself laughing too. How many got somebody that say, I? <laughs> Who do you want to be with? Not hard to figure out, is it? Emotions are a habit. And when we go to relationship, all we do is magnify them. And then we find reasons to back them up. Those people use 911, as horrible as it was. I said to them, all of them, if you get a feeling this sad, you're going to feel this sad, as horrible as it is that 3,000 people died, guess what? 4,000 people die of cancer and heart disease every day in this country. And they're men, women, children, aunts, uncles, mothers, and you're not sitting around crying about them every day. Why are you so selective in your compassion? Because what we did is focus on it, and then people use that to produce an emotion. That's what people do in a relationship. You want to change a relationship? change the primary emotion that person lives in. You want to do that? Retrain their body is one way. Only one. I'm going to give you a couple, but that's one. And the best way to do that is only if you can done it to yourself. So let's take this up one notch. Shake your body up. And notice if you sat down already, that ought to give you a clue that energy may not be at the high top of your list. Okay? It's like, oh my God, let me sit down and get comfortable. I'm not being critical of you, but just notice if you went for the path of least resistance, that's not signing up real well for your ability to transfer that to somebody else. So, but it's a new muscle, so let's use it. Let's do this. How many of you would like to have more joy, more excitement, more passion, more ecstasy in your life right now? Raise your hand. Say, I. Then if you really want it, you got to do it. Because emotions don't just hit you. They are triggered, and you can trigger them through motion. So here's what we're going to do. Shake your body out. And in a second here, we are going to shake this building with our energy. What I mean by that is... We are going to celebrate for no good reason. And here's why I say that. You don't need a reason to feel good. Why do you have to justify feeling good? And if you think that's weird, think about this. Most people don't need a reason to feel bad. Isn't it true? I have feeling like crap. How come? Woke up. And people go, I understand. But if you say to somebody, how's it going? I feel so good. How come you feel good? I don't know. I just feel good. Take that guy to the funny farm. <laughs> Isn't it sick that we live in a culture that if somebody's happy, we want to know why. But if they're sad, we understand. That's where it is. So we've got to change that pattern. So here's what you're going to do. Most people in our culture never celebrate anymore. And a relationship without celebration is a dead relationship. It's dead. Celebration is a secret to joy. Joy in a relationship is the basis of anything. That's where love can grow. So one of the things we got to do is learn to celebrate. Now, when do people in our culture celebrate? Like, go crazy like a little kid, and it's socially acceptable. When? When you graduate from school. Yeah, I did it. I have to go to work. <laughs> when else do people celebrate? Come on. 
They have their first child. It's a boy. It's a girl. And you hug strangers and it's beautiful. Everybody accepts it. Any other time you're weird. When else? Can you really cut loose and celebrate? You have your first orgasm. Good, sir. Very good. <laughs> I did it. When else? That's right. Around the world, this is the weird thing about human beings, when a local sports team wins a national championship, show me. Come on. Show me what people do. Come on. Yeah. We scream. Yeah, yeah. We did it. We did it. What is this? We did it. You didn't do shit. We did it. You watched. But I'm glad you finally make it okay to feel happy for a day. Isn't it a weird thing culturally that we're going to make our happiness tied to someone else's performance that we can't control just based on living in a city? But at least the city goes crazy for that one day. See, you don't need an excuse to feel good. How many got more than enough reasons to be happy and grateful for your life, for your health, for people you love? Say I. I. So all you got to do is retrain your body to celebrate instead of training yourself to fit in. How many of you have ever lowered your happiness or your joy or your energy because someone else wasn't feeling as good and you didn't want to offend them? <laughs> and does it make them feel better? You're playing small does not make them big. All it does is lower the standard, and most of us have learned to do that. So if you're going to lead, you got to step out of it. So let's do this. We are going to celebrate just to get that energy in our body. On a scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is dead, 10 is unstoppable intensity, go to 20. Now to do that, in case you haven't celebrated in many years, I'll remind you. First key to celebration is your feet must come off the ground. None of this, eh. I know it looks cool. But when you actually rise up like this and you extend, you open your diaphragm, which changes your biochemistry instantly. It doesn't happen to you when you do this. Second key is you must use your voice. How many of you and your kid used to make all kinds of weird noises? Come on. Make some crazy sounds out loud. Come on. I got a question for you. How many of you in this room love to sing when no one's around? You're in your car, you're singing, you're rocking. You get to the stoplight, you're still singing, rocking. You look over, the person in the car next to you is staring at you like this. What do you do? You quickly pick up your cell phone, act like you've been talking to someone. Why do we sing even though we don't sound good? Why do we like it? That's right, because emotion is created by... And to sing, you have to move parts of your body you don't normally move. And if you don't use it, you... So we like it even though we don't sound good. So when you're celebrating, you're going to extend and you're going to make sound like crazy. How many want to go for it? Say, I. I. Then your job is to outdo the old person next to you with your intensity. We're going to clap. We're going to clap till we get to three and then we'll do it. One. Two. Three, go. That's it. Come on. Come on. You two guys, get a high five from the people around you. Grab a seat. If you feel better than before, make a fist and say yes. Yeah.